Now, we don't circumcise. We baptize. They're two different signs. That's true. But they have the same function. They point to the same reality. That same spiritual reality of a heart change. Of the Spirit dwelling in you. Leading to repentance and forgiveness and restoration and a gift of righteousness by faith. And if we, if we need a text to point to, the best text on this is Colossians chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. It's a key text for this, which says, In Christ, this spiritual reality is ours. It connects circumcision and baptism, and it makes that point that in Christ, this reality is ours. By faith in Him, we belong to Him. Now, I just use the word faith. That brings us to the idea of believer's baptism, as it's called, believer's baptism. And then somebody would say, if it's by faith that we belong, which is true, then faith needs to be there before we baptize. Like what we saw this morning, that's the kind of baptism that we would call believer's baptism. This is, Paul repented, he, he came to faith, and he's baptized. There's, there's an order to it. And then some would say, that's the only way. Believer's baptism only. How do we respond to that? Well, we can say this. Faith is involved with every baptism. Even ones like this one this afternoon. Think back to Genesis 17. What do you do in order to keep the covenant? He says, this is how you must keep the covenant. That's what God says to Abraham. And then he says, you must circumcise your children. That is the keeping of the covenant in as much as any one thing can be said to keep it. That's what it is. And so to present the child is an act of faith on the part of the parents. It's a public profession of faith by the parents. It's as if they're saying, I will bring my child to be circumcised because I believe in the promises of God to Abraham. These promises are for me and my descendants as well. That's what it's like in the context of circumcision. And it's the same with baptism. Why did we baptize Aiden today? What was the reason for it? Well, because God has made promises to Artis and to me. The forgiveness of sins and, and renewal and restoration and life and, and those promises that he's given to us in Jesus, we believe that this promise is also for Aiden. Just as the promise was for Abraham and his household, and so they were circumcised, so also the promise was for Lydia, if you know the story, and her household. And so they were baptized. And the promise was for the Philippian jailer and his household. And so they were baptized. And it's for us and for our children, and so we baptize our children today. And whether the child has faith or not is not the point. We don't know if Lydia's household was converted. We don't know if the Philippian jailer's household was converted. We know that those two individuals had faith, but we don't know about their household. But what we do know is that they were baptized. So we don't baptize our children on the basis of their profession, but on the basis of God's promise.